Welcome back to another awesome video. Check out my new tape deck. That's fake. It's fake news. What? Uh, what do you mean it's fake? Look, I can fast forward. There's a picture of a tape deck spinning. How, how, how is that fake? I don't know. It looks a little too futuristic. Like it's from an alien or something. Well, you're right, actually. Today we've got a audio streaming computer disguised as a 1984 JVC cassette deck. The tape compartment has a display, and I can not only control it with a phone, but also with these original cassette deck buttons down here. And on the back, the original audio output and power connections are being used. There's better streamers, there's better builds, but I already had a lot of this stuff lying around, and I have actually shown a much nicer touch screen in a previous video. This is uh, not as cool of a case, but it does have the Raspberry Pi 7-inch uh, touch screen, which is much easier to deal with. This is a touch screen, it's just very tiny. The old tape deck carcass, a Raspberry Pi 3, and the little touchscreen were all leftovers from previous projects. They're just sitting there doing nothing. The only new ingredients I needed were voltage converters, wires, and micro switches, which I got with an Amazon gift card. So the budget for this project was essentially zero. Uh, it's just sort of a prototype to kind of to see what's possible, see how long it would take. And uh, this video is going to be about the challenges and uh, in making this, and it really did not take that long. There's a lot of things that have to happen for, for this to become an audio player thing, both hardware and software. First of all, this touch screen clips onto the Raspberry Pi. It's not an HDMI screen, so it takes away a bunch of uh, GPIO ports. So I need to see if this can work and if I can extend these wires because I can't fit the whole Raspberry Pi up front. I'd rather mount it back here. So that actually did not take too long, you know, to run these cables. Well, I don't see any display yet. Okay, there we go. Oh, got this upside down. Well, one good thing is the display can be rotated. So cool. It does work. Next, to make the original cassette deck buttons function, I used levered micro switches and aligned them with a coat hanger using tie wraps and heat shrink tubing for spacers. The only button I didn't connect was the record button. The coat hanger also provides support, pushing all the buttons forward. And there's a nice satisfying click as you press them. Finally, there's the question of powering everything. The transformer inside this cassette deck is more than adequate to power the Raspberry Pi, but it's AC. So I ran it into one of these little adjustable voltage converters to step the AC down to the five volts required by the Raspberry Pi. Pi looks like it's booting. That's a good sign. No smoky smell. Oh yeah, there it's booting up. That's good. We we're able to power the Pi from the uh, 1984 JVC AC transformer. Speaking of power, let's talk about the VU meter. This was a separate module with four wires, ground, voltage, and audio inputs for left and right. Originally, this looked like it was running on 14.1 volts DC, so my initial thought was just to split off the other leg of the transformer and use another voltage converter to provide that, but that introduced a buzz into the audio, so I ended up just running it off the same five volts as the Pi, and it seems to be working, sort of. The left meter behaves as expected, but the right meter seems like it's in a different mode. Uh, before the red side, it sort of bounces every other LED, and then once it hits the red, uh, it, it, it stacks like normal. It's very interesting, but it's a cool effect, so I just left it. I ended up hooking the separate voltage converter up to the, to the uh, switch to enable the Dolby C light, you know, and there's also a light in the cassette compartment. If I was a real engineer, I would probably create a power supply that converted the AC to DC once and then regulated the various voltages. But, you know, those voltage converters were $2 and this was a quick project. With the hardware done, let's move on to software. It actually took longer to get the software to function than the hardware, and most of the challenges were related to getting this touchscreen working. Installing the drivers for this one introduced all sorts of side effects, mostly lockups and, and other problems. One of the first things I did was locate an animated GIF of a cassette playing on a Google search and replace the default album art with that. It looks even better on a, on a phone or a PC. The 3.5 inch touchscreen display is really tiny, so I tried to modify the HTML to make it a little bit bigger. So I can go edit that, like for example, pull up the HTML, let's say we wanna make the, the album art bigger, if I say 70% maybe. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm going to change the HTML and hit Control S to save over here in my terminal session, then refresh this browser. We'll see if it gets bigger. And yes, it got bigger. But uh, making that bigger also kind of kind of cut off the, the bottom display. So, you know, just a little bit of HTML editing required. So that's kind of the story. So what's next for this project? Fix the green truck. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Fix the green truck. Well, that's different. That's a different video. But yeah, um, if I was going to continue with this particular case, I would probably put an Ethernet 
jack on the back. And then this panel on the right here uh, needs something better. That was a hole I left when I took another piece out. I had tried putting a Raspberry Pi card in there. I just need to do something with that. But maybe a, maybe a front USB port for quick access, quick, quickly hooking up a keyboard or a flash drive. But I would say in general, this is a learning experience based on existing materials just to kind of see what was possible. There's a lot more elaborate things people have done with custom cases and built-in hard drives and all sorts of crazy stuff online. One of the main things I learned was if you're trying to install a touchscreen with Mood or Volumio, probably it's best to use one of these supported touchscreens. Oh, by the way, this video was mostly about a case, a weird case, but we've also got other videos about Mood and Volumio, the software. And uh, we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye.